you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the, world. in the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from the ChrisVossShow.com. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the big show. We certainly appreciate it. As always, the Chris Voss Show is the family that loves you. But doesn't judge you, at least not as harshly as your mother-in-law, because she's just never liked you. I mean, let's just be really honest with you. But the great thing about the Chris Voss Show is we still love you, as long as you're not evil. But remember, we don't loan out money, so we're not that kind of family. We love you, but, you know, we're just not openly exclusive. Seclude, I don't even know what the right word is. But we're not loaning you money, damn it. Quit asking. <laughs> you can you can further share your family, friends, and relatives if you would, please. We need some guilt and shaming. Remember, you must have five people in your downline of referrals to listen to the show. I'm just kidding. We're not an MLM. <laughs> Go to Goodreads.com, for it says Chris Voss. LinkedIn.com, for it says Chris Voss. Chris Voss, one of the TikTokity. And Chris Voss, Facebook.com, all those crazy places on the interwebs in the sky. As always, we talk about stories. We love stories on the show. People are the sum of all their stories they collected on their journey through life, and they're the fabric of who we are. And whether they're fictional or non-fictional, it's how we learn, it's how we entertain ourselves, and all that good stuff. We have an amazing author on the show. We're gonna be talking about his book and everything that went into it, and the amazing story and how he's trying to get it put out there on the big streaming channels and get it picked up for the, for the I think the mid screen, the small screen, or the big screen, whatever screen you can get it on, damn it. We're just trying to do that. The title of the book is called The Reincarnation of Marie, A Love Reborn in Paris from the Pages of History. June 8th, 2024, it came out. Jim Woodman is. So, welcome to the show. Give us your dot com so, so people can find you on the interwebs. Yeah, sorry. Jim's my dad. I'm Henry. And the dot com is Marie the Story dot com. Don't worry about it, Chris. I won't ask you for money. There you go. At least we know people know how to Google it. So you're Henry Woodman. That's right, and baby. By habit. So tell us just a little bit about you. All right. You know, I started my sort of, I was an entrepreneur, sort of a hedonist, opportunistic entrepreneur. But when I graduated college, I moved to Los Angeles and I thought to myself, yeah, I want to produce and direct movies. That's what I want to do. And of course, that didn't happen. But while I was there, my dad, who was an author, wrote a memoir to a friend, a, sort of a, a tribute. And he's moving. My sister picks it up and she says, what is this? And he explains it's a love story. Now, mm -hmm. keep in mind, dad did not write love stories. Mm -hmm. So she says, wow, can I read it? She reads it. She loves it. She says, can I send it to Henry? She, yeah. So she sends it to me. She goes, this is amazing. It would make a great movie. Of course, I, I read it. I fall in love with it and I'm thinking, Dad, I gotta buy this. And he says, Why, sure. I, I, I gave him a buck to buy the rights, right? One dollar. And so I thought to myself, wow, kind of nepotistic of me. I'm in love with a book that my father wrote. I mean, please. So I call a friend of mine who at the time was producing a movie and I said, Can you read this and just tell me what you think? Mm -hmm. So of course he comes back three days later and he goes, This is amazing. We are meant to do this. Let's do this. Life gets in the way. He goes off into real estate. I go off doing travel films and game shows. Then I start a tech company, recently sold a tech company, and now going full circle saying, all right, now we're ready. Of course, 40 years later, we're publishing the book, which we just did, and then we're going to springboard that concept into a TV series that we're developing. Nice. There you go. Oh. Nice TV series. Everything is streaming nowadays so there's there's room for everything and people love these these romance novels is it romance novel per se yeah pretty much and and, and it's more than it's the opportunity too i mean had i tried to do something 40 years ago there mm -hmm. was a handful of distributors right and yeah. studios and that was it right now of course there's a plethora of options on where this thing can go and how it can get distributed so because of streaming there's a lot more content production it is a paranormal romance with historical fiction 
There you go. There you go. Historical fiction. People love this too. It's very romantic. It's just, you know, the history sometimes is more romantic than current day. <laughs> so give us a 30,000 overview. What's inside the book? So the book, Marie, is actually a real person. Her, her name in the late 1800s is Marie Bashkirsev. And she was an artist and a writer. She did some paintings that are in museums around the world to this day. She wrote a book from 14 to 24 when she died. She was young. She died of tuberculosis. Her book was called I Am the Most Interesting Book of All. And it was her journal that she wrote every day. Wow. And so two years after her death, her mom publishes the book and it becomes an international bestseller. It's about the thoughts and feelings of a young woman talking about things that, you know, at the eight, at the late 1800s, you just don't talk about, you know, mm. masturbation and sexuality and virginity mm. and things of that nature. That's Friday's and, right in here. Yeah, no, that's taboo. So what happens is, you know, let's say a hundred years later, a young guy picks up the book, the journal, he reads it and he falls in love with the written word. He falls in love with Marie. He visits the place that she had visited. He finally gets the courage to go visit her tomb. She's in the largest tomb in Passé in, in Paris. And he finally realizes, you know what? This is crazy. I'm in love with a person who died 100 years earlier. This cannot happen. There's, it's, it's ridiculous. And, of course, as the story goes, he finds her reincarnation. Oh, wow. And that's the premise of the story is the fact that this soulmate connection whether it's through books or real life and do you reincarnate hmm. there you go that's probably the whole reason i've been single all my life i've been seeing i've never married and and uh, i've been saving up for the divorce is half the reason i've been waiting and then i just never got tired of being happy so that's the other problem anyway so i just never married anyway but that's that might be my problem my soulmate's on a different timeline that that's different why, Different metaverse or something. Who knows? Yeah, oh. so I, I probably need to die and then go into some other timeline and then I'll bump into her or probably probably with my luck, she'll be in a, the wrong timeline. It's it's going to take us a few lifetimes to finally get together. Maybe explains everything that's going on right now. So there you go. Well, you know, people people like this fantasy of, of soulmates. Why is soulmates so important to people? Why do you think that's such a draw for people on that subject of finding love and finding their soulmate? You know, I think it's a draw because there's always the question that we ask as humans, okay, is this all there is? And mm -hmm. is there such a thing as soulmates or are we just destined to live this little teeny blip in time and history? So those questions, are, we, obviously we don't answer the questions, who knows, but it makes the question. Are there other people out there? And, and the reason I'm publishing the book is really as a springboard for the television series, which does a far deeper dive where the working title now is slipping. We are slipping through time. But the concept is there are people in your life today who may or may not have been part of your previous life or lives. And what's the deal? Are we paying back karma because we did something to them before or they're paying back us back for something good we did and you know the sins of the father the karmatic yeah. retribution all of that stuff and we we also are exploring the concepts of time travel or you know this metaverse concept mm. of you know every decision i make i go in a different direction right mm. had i not done that where would i be today or had i not read the book and found that she is part of me had i not been looking for her ah so does he read the book and start looking for her then? He does. He doesn't really look for her, but he mm. fantasizes about her. Ah. He obviously dates women and he compares those women to his dead romantic writer, you know, Marie. Mm -hmm. right? He finishes the date. He goes back to his place and he reads her book and imagines what it would be like with her. Ah. So he's trying he, to see if that gal that he took on a date is the is the one? Yeah, and not so much the one is she's not right for me, and I don't know why. Then read the book, and I'm like, this is my my perfect match. There you go. I think I think a lot of people have that thing nowadays where they 
where they where they have a list of what they're looking for or a person that they're looking for, and they just never can find it because I don't know the, the list is pretty hard. I also, yeah, I, I sorry, Chris. I also think that marketing is telling us we have to meet this person we're going to be eternally happy with and live happily ever after. Okay, that's kind yeah. of a bit of a stretch in marketing jargon, but really. I'm going to meet the woman I'm going to be passionately in love with and we're always going to be happy and we're never going to have any issues and we're going to live holding hands forever. Ooh, we could be friends and we can understand and live, but nothing is perfect. Yeah. I mean, what if she smells bad? No, I'm just kidding. That's not good. Oi! Women are, don't usually do that. It's usually men who smell bad. The But you never know. She might have like a, a, a really bad habit, like leaving the toilet seat down or something. The... <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? I don't um, think we explore that concept, but but thanks for the thought. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's, if you write your second book, you put that somewhere in the series if you need there content. You but no, it's you know everyone gets told you know the, your soulmate's gonna come, and I'm just I'm 56. I'm like they better hurry up and bloody get here because I'm running out of time, eh? <laughs> so we, we 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 explore the concept a little bit more and much deeper in the TV series, as mm. I mentioned now. What happens in her real life, Marie, the, the person who was from the 1800s, she also had a pen pal love letter relationship with another famous writer called Mon Apostle. Mm -hmm. But she wrote as anonymous. He did not know that she existed. This is true. Mm -hmm. In the series, they happen to meet up and they have a, a challenged encounter where he violates her. Right? Oh. And what happens is, he doesn't know it's her because, you know, they're, they're in this love letter relationship. And so she writes in her journal, I will find you in time. I will find you. This is true. So we in the series look at it like, okay, she needs to find him. Our protagonist in the series is a reincarnated Maupassant. Oh. And she's trying to right the wrong, meaning she wants to get back at him even though they might be soulmates, you know, that adage that love and hate are two sides of the same coin. It's mm. not that she doesn't love them, but she needs to straighten out the, the issue or right the wrong, if you will. Mm. This is probably what's happening on with my soulmate. She's, she's out for revenge because I owe her money or something. That's probably what it is. I broke her you, lamp. You wronged her in a previous life. I broke her lamp in a previous life, and I said I'd pay her back, and I never did. And she's she's hunting me for revenge. It's not going to be love when she finds me. She'd probably just beat me over the head with a bat. Or something. Now, now, that's showing your age. That's an I dream of genie thing. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like an I dream of genie thing. Yeah. Is there a lamp in this book at all? The An, an astronaut? Yeah, so what, what, when you read this book... What made it stand out to you as a, as a terrific story? What, what was it that uh, drew you to it? When I read the, first of all, you know, dad was a travel writer. He's a great writer, but he never wrote this type of passionate love story, which was very odd to, for my sister was shocked, as was I. So when we read it, it was a departure. But what was standing out was the, the incredible passion and emotion that you get. I mean, I read it 40 years ago and I was in tears. I read it a couple of months ago before I published it and I was in tears again. Wow. And I've given it to several friends of mine. And every time I'm thinking, okay, maybe, you know, the world has changed. I get so many responses with this emotional attachment of, wow, I can feel the emotion and the passion. And one of my mentors actually wrote me and he says, you know, I had to put it down towards the end because I, the emotions were too strong for me. Wow. You know? That's yeah. a hell of a testament there. Yeah. He, he lost his wife a year and a half ago, but you know, the fact of the matter is there is some, it's a very well-written passionate little story about love and, and sort of that begging the question again, mm -hmm. is there that somebody and you know, is it, and, 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 Obviously, if there is such a thing as soulmates, do we pass through times and not actually get together? Mm. Or do we make decisions like Chris and not find them? Or we've found <laughs> some and we've walked away? Or we find somebody and we say yes to pretty much anything because we're in that sort mm. of frame of mind and we miss the opportunity? 
Yeah. You know, you never know. So what happened to me, man. I slept in on a Saturday or something, didn't go to Starbucks, and she was probably like in the car ahead of me, and we yeah. just we just two ships passed in the night at Barry Manilow song or something. Yeah. Now they're all on social media, so they're never gonna find yeah. each other. Never gonna find each other. Yeah. It's just too busy. I'm I'm probably on all the wrong Instagram. <laughs> so there you go. But people love romance. It's set in Paris. I think that's that's always a romantic place to set a book, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, Marie, the the reason for the book, who wrote the journal a hundred and some odd years ago in the late eighteen hundreds, she was a Ukrainian aristocrat whose family moved to Paris and, and when she was very young, right? So she was brought up in royalty. She was very much a feminist of her day. You know, she was very upset with the fact that she was a great artist and she wouldn't be allowed into a lot of the art academies and schools in Paris because she was a woman. And it was, it was vexing to her that the women didn't get the, the respect that she thought they were due. So it was a, it was a big deal. And then Paris for her was her hometown, you know, and that was where our protagonist reads about her, goes to the cafes where she went and the parks where she would paint and the apartment building where she had lived and just imagined what her life was like. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. Uh, in fact, the, it's over in France right now is so the Olympics being held. And all that good stuff. There you go. There you go. And, you know, and the book was acquired by, by our protagonist and in real life, you know, they have, this has been a decades long thing where along the Seine river, the one that they're saying is a bit polluted to swim, but along that river, they have these stalls of booksellers mm -hmm. that in many cases sell these old vintage books. And so if you're an avid reader of these types of books, it's like a treasure trove and maybe like a flea market where you're treasure hunting for the ideal stories because they're all there. Mm -hmm. There you go. So now what's the series? What's your plan on the series? It sounds like you kind of have it planned out a little bit. I imagine if someone buys it, they're probably going to have the rights to do whatever the hell they want. You know how they are sometimes. So the concept, we, we sent the pilot to a, a crit, you know, there's a place called We Screenplay that does the critic, uh, critique of pilots. And it said it was in obviously the top 5% of concepts because yeah. The concept of falling in love with somebody who doesn't really exist through their writing, who then you find, and then there's this interplay. So what we've done with the series, or what we're doing with the series, better said, is we're doing a far deeper dive into her life, our main character, his name is Jonathan, his life, how he believes he has slipped through time as a kid and seen things that happened where you know, she died of tuberculosis and he's seen her in a sanatorium, but he wasn't sure what he was seeing. And so we get these pieces of a puzzle throughout this series that come together in the end. And we then start to understand whose life in a previous timeline is now intertwined with lives in the current timeline. And mm -hmm. what that means for us, is it the soulmate that we believed it was or does it twist and turn and we're paying back karma for something we did a sin that we had in a previous life so those explanations sort of weave us through this timeline and you know we don't know what the spirits are doing to us if they exist we don't know what they're doing to us now if they affect mm. our lives like go, man what a crappy break that was i wonder how that happened or what a great break you know i'm lucky Huh. Yeah. My guardian angel is looking out for me. That's what I need, a guardian angel. Maybe that's what we should man. date. Maybe that is my soulmate, a guardian I, I angel. See it right there up on your shoulder. It's, yeah, it's there you go. Still... Yeah, let's, they're both devils, actually. That's the problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> do, do uh, you know, Lifetime, Lifetime or the Hallmark Channel, this might be a great thing for them. I think, do they buy shows and make them? I think well, everybody right. buy, yeah everybody buys shows it depends on how you do it. there's there's definitely an audience for a paranormal kind of a spiritual not not so much spiritual as it is sci-fi history romance i mean look at this a thing called outlander that was a huge success in mm -hmm. the last several years and it's a story about a woman who you know somehow touches a tree and is transported through time and finds her love in another timeline she goes back and forth 
And that's kind of this paranormal romance concept that is appealing to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It's it's interesting how people just fall in love with this stuff. But, you know, women love it. We have a lot of romance novels on the show and everything. I mean, it's just it's just something people love. I mean, what do you... And, and listen, it adds another dimension of, okay, if I'm Chris Voss and I haven't found, and I'm 56 and I haven't found my love, does that mean I'm going to get one in another lifetime? Or did I do something wrong in a previous lifetime that they're punishing me now or actually rewarding me because I feel pretty damn happy, you know? I would hope so because I feel ripped off at this point. Yeah. But there's that audience of people who ask the questions, you know, we will constantly ask why are we here what's it all about is there somebody for us are these things that we hear about about you know sins of the father and karma do they exist and if so how does it play into my life yeah i probably just didn't like my soulmate that's probably what it was i was like no i don't <laughs> they, they you were on the they, you were on the hate side of the love and hate side yeah, of the Probably uh, they probably were on the wrong political party, and I was just like, I don't care if you're my soulmate. I I can't be on your side of the whatever. <laughs> it's probably like that, or I don't know. They like they like Starbucks, and I like Dunkin' Donuts, and we just never met. That's that probably the problem. <laughs> just just never met. You know, we just never got there. So do you do you see since your dad wrote the book? I mean, do you see any future? Maybe the story or the characters taking them on to future books. I don't know if the book would go on as much as the TV series, which I think yeah. has more opportunity because the book really is a springboard to the TV series. And the series essentially can go for multiple seasons because let's be honest, these are souls that can be reincarnated any time and place that we want, right? Mm -hmm. So the fact of the matter is, if it does well and they go, man, what a great concept. I love it. And people are really into this whole interweaving of lifestyles and how they affect past and present. Okay. In a future or a past or a different time or location, what do we find? Right. Whether it's in, you know, here's what we're going to see them finally getting together because if, you know, they've righted the wrong and now we're trying to get back so that we can have that utopian life. That's where the opportunity for multiple seasons go. And because my dad wrote it and I haven't changed a word, then it goes pretty much that's where it is. This is the springboard. And ironically, when I spoke to the publisher, I said, listen, I need to, I'm lazy and I don't like to read. And I'm sure there are people like me. Do I get a voice talent for the audio version? Yeah. Easily. And she says, you know, you have a pretty good voice. You should do it. You should do it. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm really not a, an actor or voice talent or anything. But you know what? For As a tribute to dad, let me do it. So there's an audio book. And sadly, you'd have to listen to me for that period. In addition, there's a piano little transitions from Chopin that was mentioned multiple times in the book. It's Chopin pieces that is done by my nephew. So the father wrote it, the son published it, and the grandson does audio and, and voiceover, and the grandson does the music transitions. There you go. Now you just need a Holy Ghost, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You got a triad there going on. Family <laughs> affair, baby. Yeah. Family affair. What, what haven't we discussed or covered about the book that you want to tease out to people to get them to pick it up? I think the big thing about is, as I've mentioned multiple times, is the concept of reincarnation some people believe it exists or the concept of time travel or slipping through time or you know nowadays with the metaverse and we're starting to find these interesting concepts of is there another me and i kind of went left when i should have gone and the guy that went right he ended up with my soulmate and do i have to wait another life so these concepts are ever present as we start to explore our mind and our world that we're such a tiny little speck in the universe, right? Mm -hmm. How do we grapple with that concept? Now, the book does a good job of grappling with a, a very slim area of reincarnation. The TV series will go far deeper. And, you know, listen, Chris, if you or anybody else wants more information on where we're going with this, there's mm -hmm. the website, mariethestory.com. Okay. And it, it outlines a book, my dad as the author, and the TV series with my partner, Doug. There you go. MarieTheStory.com.
You got um, it, man. And yeah, I mean, you could just this could be an endless series because you know you could just hop around timelines and skip around and and uh, don't they do that with Highlander the movie? <laughs> They, they do it with a lot of things. And, and the other thing that you can imagine is you can also incorporate, listen, there are so many historical fictions or f- historical figures out there that you could create this fiction around because, you know, I, I imagine most of us have not heard of Marie Barstersef. Mm-hmm. But if we lived 120 years ago, her book was a bestseller. She was a phenomenon, right? Mm-hmm. And it was all the rage. So you have to know there are people around the world in different countries that have done amazing things that would make for a great story incorporated into this type of genre. There you go. People love these stories too, especially women. They love, we have a lot of two or 300 romance novels on the show. They, you know, these books sell it's hotcakes. So they right. love them especially beach reads. So there you go. So give us our final thoughts as we go out, the .com, where people can pick up the book and uh, final pitch out to people as we go out. Sure. Oh, obviously the, 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 the book is called The Reincarnation of Marie. The .com is mariethestory.com. The TV series that would, will be springboarded off or the concept from this is now called Slippin', but who knows if somebody's going to change that into something else they want. So all of those things follow the same general premise you know is there such a thing as soulmates and if there is how do we find them are they through time is there such thing as reincarnation is it time travel what's it all about Mm -hmm. obviously we don't know the answers to all of that but we pose them in, in a very eloquent and passionate way there you go and And i won't and i won't even tell you how it ends because that's for the Oh, the yeah, readers yeah. to figure out. <laughs> That's the one thing about novels. We can't ever give away the middle and the ending because, you know, people got to, you got to buy the book, darn it, people to find out. So there yeah. you go. It's been wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you for coming on. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. And thanks to everybody who got this far. Much there you go. Thanks, our audience, for tuning in. Order the book wherever fine books are sold. It's called The Reincarnation of Marie, A Love Reborn in Paris, from the pages of history. Jim Woodman was the author, Mr. Woodman's father. It came out June 8th, 2024. Get it wherever fine books are sold. Go to goodreads.com, for Chess Chris Foss, LinkedIn.com, for Chess Chris Foss, Chris Foss one on the TikTokity and all those crazy places on the internet. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. We'll see you guys next time. And that should be us out.